I met the uh, Reda style novel team. The initial part of the team I met in uh, at the conference in Helsinki, and uh, sparks started flying. We just hit it off. Spoke about areas of creativity without law, um, and I think that's what got Eric's attention also because these are um, these are artists uh, who. may be protected by traditional copyright structures and traditional trademark structures but they also choose either they're not protected or they choose not to be protected by these structures and have their own norms and systems of respecting um, their artwork respecting their intellectual property and enforcing it so for example tattoo artists um they they like a visual artist like a painter or a sculptor but they're just using your skin as a canvas and they're creating artworks that walk around and see the world every day but uh, you don't see any tattoo artists going and registering a copyright for their artwork and now you have a lot of disputes around that so the latest NBA basketball games one of the tattoo artists was suing EA Sports and others because he said I did LeBron James tattoo but I didn't license uh, you to display the tattoo in the game so that's uh, you know that's the things like that uh, was where um, what we started discussing and then uh, if you think about uh, even bartenders and um, and chefs um, the way chefs in let's say France protect their recipes and protect the way they make food, they create they creating their creatives but copyright does not protect re- recipes and uh, but it's an area of creativity but without law so what they do is they they have this close network of uh, of uh, chefs who are michelin star michelin hat chefs and who've come out i, I remember one of them speaking about the sous vide method mm-hmm. that was invented in this close knit circle and uh, it was only when they allowed the method to go out was when the rest of the world realized what sous vide was mm-hmm. um but even for a new chef to break in if they broke this rule and disclosed the secret to someone else you would be ostracized and would not be able to so that was their norms based approach of working with chefs protecting their recipes protecting their techniques and even bartenders they create some of the best like mixologists mm-hmm. they create some of the best drinks but you can't protect them like mm-hmm. and then some of them become trademarks like the bloody mary here you know that I mean, all financed by alcohol companies at the end of the day but think about it in this context the alcohol brand is more protected than the cocktail um and the person making the cocktail is so much less protected than the owner of the alcohol brand so these were things that we were talking about and then you, you mentioned circus artists and performing artists and uh, you know they as well they they fall within the confines of the current um intellectual property system but uh, either they find it hard to access uh, the traditional legal structure and, uh, and system or it's just not suited uh, to them like how do you register copyright for a great a juggling piece or a great movement piece on stage like by most uh, copyright conventions they refer to as dramatic works but it's changing every time it's it's uh, so is there one copyright for a piece or is it multiple copyrights because each time it's performed is different um but let's say the skeleton is the same and maybe the flesh of the skin changes each time it's performed but that's uh, so the performing arts in general have they are at a lower level of protection uh, as compared to the recorded music industry as compared to the film industry because they are in a kind of fixed tangible medium whereas the performing arts you see it on stage once the next time it's performed it's different it's never going to be the same and that's the nature of performance um so that's why it was really interesting and i know i've been rambling but it was really, <laughs> it was really interesting when we came to this this uh, proposition of a seed artist 
coming in with their work and ceding their work to other artists to come in and create either derivatives of uh, adaptations of them because in the traditional copyright system that we have across the world right now the moment you create an adaptation um, it's almost like a separate copyright is mm-hmm. created for that adaptation and you can't really do that without a license from the original copyright holder of the original work i mean we we don't know what the derivative and the adaptation may be but we need to create some sort of uh, record this relationship create some sort of license that works and um, make it as little legal ease as possible or legal ease <laughs> it's possible so i started working on this license agreement to, because it's important that we capture all the stakeholders and um, it's important that we capture all the stakeholders we talk about the work we talk about who's going to be licensed let's say to uh, to create this new work and what mediums it's allowed to be used on and how do we define the economic relationship like how does the uh, seed artist receive royalty or a kickback or how how they con- uh, incentivized and compensated for the usage of their work and uh, the other stakeholders who fund this entire process how are they uh, compensated as well and what's uh, basically what's in it for everyone we try to keep it simple we the first part talks uh, about who the parties are and then in most contracts that's what you of course you say okay the, the agreement you'll have an effective date so the effective date could be the date on which uh, let's say um it's signed uh, on the blockchain or uh, the actual uh, funds are deployed um to uh, to the artist and the community uh, to the artist by the community um that could be the effective date and then the parties here are the seed performer the artist and the community that funds the work so the seed performer is the one contributing their artwork and saying hey sphere this is my work hey artists and community um feel free to take my work get it for the fund uh, create a derivative and fund the entire process so that's uh, in in any agreement you need to define who the parties are just so that we can define their roles define their obligations and rights the next is the artist is the person creating the uh, the derivative or the adaptation and uh, those details i've just defined the it as a performing artist but this can be changed to you can have as much of a definition or as little um, as you need i've just for now uh, stated a to z because um we can have so many members of the community who could fund this piece and each alphabet would represent kind of their name or wallet address uh, in this case and collectively they will be known as the seed funders of the derivative and this is the karmic token issuance process that uh, we've been talking about at this sphere the role of the sphere itself we've also kind of defined that to play, be this administrator this kind of manager uh, the ecosystem in which this entire exchange happens uh, that's the role of the sphere so we've defined that as well and maybe you're thinking why so many definitions but i um I'm also at the moment trying to work on making agreements in the real world translating them into smart contracts. Mm-hmm. And we've discussed Lexon and how uh, you know that that could work because uh, Lexon is this technology that's creating um uh, taking agreements and translating them into code in solidity which would be deployed as smart contracts. 
the first time I heard the word smart contracts, I felt really stupid because uh, I thought what we were doing was smart enough. <laughs> but uh, when uh, I really saw what it was, it is uh, the if-then statements. So uh, if uh, if you and I, Catherine, we have a bet, uh, we um, we say if it rains, I pay you fifty euros. And if it doesn't, you pay me 50 euros. Now, that's to a smart contract which has these ifs and thens. Mm-hmm. And we deposit our 50 euros each. Depending on the weather, the money goes to whoever. But it has to be defined. You are, defi- uh, you are defined as person A. I'm defined as person B. And then the weather aspect the money aspect so all of that needs to be defined Mm. and what will happen when so if it rains then i pay you the money so that's the reason we we need to be careful and we need to define all these terms and they all with bunny ears or uh, quotations because those are the definitions of Mm -hmm. what we're doing we're assigning everything a role everything a purpose and a definition so that this can go on to the blockchain this can be deployed as a smart contract this can be our smart contract and we do all the hard work the groundwork the legwork now so that later on no one in the performing arts has to talk to a lawyer and get a 30 page agreement done for this process because it is complex maybe we're trying to oversimplify it but Anything that can be put into a nutshell should stay there. I believe so. Let's 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 do that. We've defined the derivative, and derivative. The definition is just something I've put down, but this is subject to uh, comments and change basis. Everyone's opinion. Mm-hmm. I've uh, defined it as a remix or adaptation or derivation of the work created by the artist. Uh, sorry, the work uh, that will be recreated by the artist. Now, the NFT right now is without a definition because we need to we need to brainstorm. I guess we need to discuss what the NFT will be. Is it just going to be representative of the the work? Is it going to have some sort of other connection um, to a smart contract? Is it going to uh, just be a collectible um, for people to to hold or um, they hold it till such date where there is enough money in the sphere collected from the adaptation and then they exchange it for the money or the tokens. We need to define what the, the role of the NFT is or what the NFT will contain at this, mm-hmm. this point. Um, and I, I find it quite funny because uh, all this hype that we've seen uh, with NFTs, I've always t- thought of NFTs as a medium, not really to be hyped. Like, you never you never <laughs> saw people talking about CDs when they first came out this way, like, ah, CD is $69 million for one CD, <laughs> something like that. It would, it would have been absurd, right? And uh, I still think NFTs are a great medium, mm-hmm. but just hyping them up I, I guess uh, I guess it was the only way to bring to web 3 the next wave of creatives uh, otherwise it would have just been lost with the uh, the tech uh, engineers the infrastructure people the people laying the woodwork for this uh, web 3 world and then the business people would come in and take over I guess they didn't want um, what happened with web 1 to happen to web 3 so they brought in the creators with NFTs we will come back to the definition of what will go inside the NFT Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, but then what's really important for any license we've spoken about the parties we've spoken about some of the definitions and the roles Um, what's really important for any kind of license is to define what is the term of the license? What media can the work be used in? And what territories? These are, mm-hmm. And then, of course, most, most, most important is the usage that is permitted via the license. So, we spoke about the usage. 
which is to uh, allow the remix or adaptation of the work to be recreated by the artist the media i had originally put this on i had put some complicated uh, licensing term i think i had said all linear modes in and um, linear and non linear modes in mediums and eric asked me you know what does that even <laughs> mean and then i said uh, how do i explain <laughs> <laughs> so instead of that complicated definition of what media it's uh, allowed to be just used on i said, because it's going to be a performance based work i just put it down as all performative live uh, a dramatic non recorded medium so any medium that's non recorded for now because i think we need another level of consent from the seed artist of whether there can be a recording made mm-hmm. of the performance because mm-hmm. uh, that's the performer right in essence and uh, we need to have the consent of the uh, the author i i feel that um, if we don't have the consent for the second level it's a bit of a transgression um we are, we are changing the nature of the work which maybe the original author does not want it to be in a recording they may want it to be ever evolving as the nature of the performing arts so that was something that i thought about and um and that's why i've put uh, put it either performative dramatic uh, live non recorded mediums we can change it uh, we can put any media we can define it to only facebook only youtube mm-hmm. or only certain stages only we can put whatever media that we want but um it's important just to have the consent of the seed artist um i think it would be easier for us to define um for the entire sphere what medium we okay with. i think we've at least for music we've made it so complex for ourselves to collect and distribute this money and think about it this is like a recording a recorded format mm-hmm. where you you can tell what file has been used where now think about it in the performance format how are we going to know a piece has been performed one time or a hundred times how are we going to know where it's being performed uh, do we have oracles all over the world to monitor this we have friends of the sphere we have volunteers in each location with we have every venue in the world part of this network that says hey i heard uh, this great uh, this great movement piece is being performed and i know it's part of the sphere and but i see in the sphere it's listed only five performances they're doing 15 or something mm-hmm. <laughs> something like that uh, i'm thinking of worst case from the we we could uh, make it such that within the sphere is a company like tick eat so uh, so all ticketing for this performance has to be done through that mm-hmm. company and then it's on the blockchain it's transparent mm-hmm. we can see how many tickets were sold and purchased when for what price and then through the smart contract you the seed artist receives some amount from every sale the sphere uh, community receives some amount from every sale the sphere receives an admin fee from every sale kind of thing so yeah. if I, i i i follow what you're saying we shouldn't try to copy the traditional uh <laughs> ip industry we yeah. should definitely benefit from the Uh, the the openings that the blockchain allows us and actually invent a system that would be much easier to govern than the one that's already existing exactly i yeah you you hit the nail on the head we may fail but if we don't fail we'll never know speaking about how this is going to be enforced within the community yes there is still a level of good faith good will these words will have to pop up and a mutual sense of understanding now how do we reflect that in a smart contract how do we reflect that as a dao protocol i as a lawyer i have the toughest time doing that 
on a daily basis trying to reflect the intention of mm-hmm. two parties on a document i don't know how lawyers uh, coupled with engineers and others are going to be able to translate that into code i don't think so far we've had proof of work consensus and proof of stake consensus mm-hmm. let's see if we can have proof of good faith consensus and then if it's not good faith then it just destroys itself and burns everything it's yeah. like you're defining trust basically yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this circle of trust if it's not a circle of trust anymore what happens how do we if it's broken i don't think either we need to fix it and when are these points decided upon right where you can again define when the circle of trust has been broken mm-hmm. right like is it automatic or is it like when someone needs to hire another lawyer to do that or so like <laughs> we're trying to get lawyers out of business <laughs> so am i <laughs> so i can go back to stage <laughs> i don't want to be in a lawyer camera <laughs> yeah. but I, one thing i would say uh, with dows you know we're always trying to be democratic but we also need to understand democracy is slow mm. it's one of the slowest forms of government everyone has to have a say we think about any dictatorship in the world the speed at which decisions are made the speed at which things are ex- ex- executed and implemented uh, it's it's a lot faster uh, in being decentralized uh, and having these like the swiss they vote five times a year we yeah. in india to have one election my god uh, it's uh, i mean we have a huge population but uh, so we need to also be mindful of how much uh, time we're consuming how much energy we're consuming mm-hmm. off people and then off the world uh, as well coming back into the agreement we need to speak about the term and territory those those are important so usually a license it's important to define how long the person will have the rights for so i just said period of 1 year from the effective date is the period during which you can you have time to create the adaptation if you've not created it in that much time i think there's something wrong the sphere gives you a set amount of time to create the derivative otherwise it may be reversed mm-hmm. burn the nft or uh, money goes back into the the wallet uh, or the safe um but once this work the adaptation is created you it's in perpetuity you 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 have the rights to use this work in perpetuity or we can even define that how once the derivative is created how long can the derivative be performed for we can also then define it uh, to say that if the derivative is created it needs to go into the sphere process as well kind of like how creative commons operates mm-hmm. if you use a work that has a creative commons license then your your work as well needs to be embodied with the same licensing terms and ethos we define the territory is because sometimes you want to work with a different artist for a different like what, what if you have uh, two performances from the se- same seed artwork uh, being performed in india on the same day at the same time you have a limited audience mm-hmm. limited venues mm-hmm. uh, which one are, are they going to be competing for the same time and resources sometimes what is uh, important to do is give people uh, territorial rights so that they can perform it uh, they they've got a good network in europe you have the rights to perform this work in europe uh, someone else can do the same thing in india someone else can do the same thing in brazil the funny thing is in a lot of music contracts we used to say across the world and then we started saying universe because when the satellite radio came in a uh, lot of the artists said oh you don't have the rights for outside the earth because technically the satellite is outside the earth i think we need to have the same terms of if someone's being allowed to create a derivative they also have to bring the derivative as part of the skill mm-hmm. for so that others can Uh, go ahead and create on the basis of that and there's a i think there's a there's a term used in a very different context the indian supreme court used it in the context of protecting our environment um mm-hmm. it's uh, called intergenerational equity mm-hmm. and we need to protect that i believe so if we're allowing someone to create a work we're allowing someone we also uh, ask them to respect the fact that 
someone else should be able to pick up that work and create it on the same terms in the same system there is a fund that is created to uh, we could have a separate fund that where we know that something is so left of center that people aren't going to fund it the sphere funds it we we have especially then we could have a let's say a committee or a group of the longest standing the mo- uh, members or the longest standing patrons who uh, would decide uh, which uh, the works that failed in raising money which of them needs to be given the sphere fund to continue what we what we essentially doing is we are giving the sea performers granting the artist the right to create the derivative and then perform the derivative in the medium that we've spoken about in the territories that we've spoken about for the term that we've spoken about and of course with this is the right to commercialize the work that is to charge a ticket uh, fee or uh, entry fee with us defining uh, royalties and the automation of ticketing we need to work with partners uh, who will give us and support us with infrastructure in web3 that makes everything transparent makes uh, things not necessarily decentralized uh, but we need to allow uh, reduce the burden on performers so that they don't have to take care of administration and management and accounting and finance uh, performers can be performers and blockchain will take care of the rest and i think that's the biggest use case for the sphere or the biggest vision that